yours they don't want any kids to go to lessons? Not yours. Some, somebody yeah. else stopped by and talked to me earlier this week where they can't do any field trips. Their uh, program won't allow any swim lessons. They won't do any field trips where kids have access to water because something happened on one trip where a child did drown. And so they've now put up such a wall that we're not gonna go around water again ever. And, and so it's, it's, that's an initial response. We see that with the, the NDPA stuff. And so it's one of those things where it's like, okay, we don't wanna knock the wall down completely, but we wanna put some windows in there so we can see other options. And so there are other options, alarms, <coughs> gates, fences, swim lessons. There are other things that we can do to prevent this situation from happening again without ever going around water again. So it's one of those things that we work through these things. Safer 3 talks about that kind of stuff, talks about the safer pools, the safer response, knowing how to dial 911. That, that kind of stuff is a phenomenal. If you're doing a water safety day, do dry stations and wet stations. Dry sta if you have access to the water to do the wet stations. If you don't, you can do all dry stations. You can talk about reach, throw, don't go without getting in water. You can talk about how to dial 911. You can talk about these things of how to work with a lifeguard, that kind of stuff, that, that helps. And then there's also another program, a gentleman named Jim Reiser out of Columbia, South Carolina, has um, Swim Lessons University, and he has like Water Smart 101. He has DVDs that parents can watch to learn about how to make their kids safer around the water and materials like that. So these are kinds of things that are available already that we just want to make folks aware of and, and help spread the message. Who else to get involved? These are the fun ones that we've, again, grown over the five years of figuring out what we can do to offer more resources to anybody and everybody, not just our local partners. And that's why I like coming to this conference is because most of you guys I haven't partnered yet with, but I can give you some resources to help. Local swim clubs, if you have a competitive team in your area, there are swimmers that need community service hours to graduate, and they know swimming. And they like to talk about swimming. They're very comfortable talking about swimming because it's what they know. It's just one of those being chlorinated things. And <laughs> she's a swim mom. She understands this. It's one of those things where swimmers typically, we're a little bit off our rockers. Not only are we fish with no land skills, but the chlorine has affected our brains to being very passionate about water and, and wanting people to be safe around it. And it's very cool to watch older swimmers, you know, high school age kids, get in the water with the younger ones. Because it, it, it causes them to have to go back to their roots to think of, how did I learn to swim? And what, is it, what are the skills that I have to teach to have somebody put their face in the water, to blow bubbles, to be comfortable lying on their back? And for a kid that's a fish, that really makes them have to think about what they are doing to help somebody else not be afraid. And it's so rewarding for them. They, swimmer kids, love this stuff. And so if you do have access to some water, but you need some help, maybe you have a staff of five or six, but you've got 50 or 60 kids, you want to have extra reinforcements if you're getting those kids in the water. And so bring in swimmer kids. If you can't afford to pay lifeguards, see if there are high school swimmers or club swimmers that need volunteer service hours, and they can help you get your kids in the water safely. Scouting has been one that has boomed over the last couple of years where kids, typically swimmer kids, but not always, are doing community, or not community service projects, but Eagle Scout projects for the boys and Girl Scout Gold Award projects for the girls where they are working to attain that level of their scouting ranks and they do a swim project related to it. We had <coughs> one young boy, um, he did a swimathon, so it was a, a that's, which is a, a trademark title of a, a way to raise money, kids swim laps and collect pledges. But he didn't just do that and donate the money, he raised the money and then he went out and bought all kinds of swim equipment and then donated that to make a splash, which we then dispersed to our local partners. So he went out and bought us kickboards and pool boys, which most of that stuff is a little bit over the level of what learn to swim kids need. You know, he's a competitive swimmer, he didn't quite think blowing bubbles. But it was still a very generous donation, accounted for his project, we signed off on it, and we donated almost 100 bags of equipment to our local partners, because I mean, they're all over the kickboards. The pool boys, they'll have to use those as flotation devices and talk about other things like that, but it's, it's one of those things where it's a pool boy. A pool boy is a piece of styrofoam that a kid, a swimmer, puts between their, their legs and then they only use their arms. So they can work on it for stroke mechanics, they can work on it for strength building. It's, it's, a, it's a swimmer thing, a, typically a competitive swimmer thing, 
But yeah, so it was one of those not quite so applicable for our lessons part, <laughs> but they can still put it out front like a noodle and hold it like a kickboard and stuff. So they have to be a little bit creative, but it was it was a very generous effort by this young, you know, 16 year old who did it, who did his Eagle Scout project that way. Um, and we've had young girls who've done gold, uh, gold award projects where they created their own community water safety day, and then they. You know, they brought in swim instructors, and they brought in groups of, of younger scouts, or they brought in um, kids from Boys and Girls Club, and they talked about water safety, and they did the stations and everything. And, and these high school age kids are organizing this stuff themselves. So we try to give them the outline, we try to give them some ideas, but overall, we we let them run the project on their own. We're not the, we're not there at the site supervising them or anything like that. So it's been kind of cool to watch kids that are that are involved with that. So if, again, if you're connected in your community with a local scout troop, then maybe this is a project where your kids could be the, the subjects or the receivees of all of the water safety instruction that a, a, a local scout would be working on. Sea Scouts is a new one that we've just begun a, a connection with. Um, they've called us a couple of times over the years, and it's been kind of fun to watch as Make a Splash has grown, who contacts us. And it's, it's not just been folks with swim lessons or folks with groups of kids that they want to take swim lessons. Turns out USA Diving, USA Water Polo, USA Synchro, USA um, Sailing, USA Rowing, all of these other national governing bodies under the Olympic movement, all of their kids are supposed to know how to swim. What a concept. So they've become involved with Make a Splash because they want their kids to have these water safety skills and be introduced to, maybe not their, they're not going to be competitive swimmers, but we're gonna start them on the road to being involved with these other sports. Not that we wanna lose our kids to other sports. You know, the, there's you know, that water polo stuff that it's fun because it's a game and it has a ball and everything like that. We don't wanna lose our kids to that, but it is a good thing. It is a good sport and kids like playing it and it is a good thing, but yeah, we, we wanna keep our swimmers swimming. But with Sea Scouts, it's been kind of fun because it's a whole other level of scouting, but it's a all water-based. It's all open water boating around lakes and rivers and that kind of stuff. And so it's another level of connection that we didn't have before. So it's again, it's a good connection. If you've got them in your community, partner up with them because you can talk water safety for your kids. Master swimmers. These are the folks that are graduated out of competitive swimming at an age group level. So they are usually 20 or 25 and older. Many of them swim all the way into their 80s and 90s. You wanna talk about a special level of passion with people that are chlorinated, go to your master swimmers. These are adults that have moved on into the real world and they are still competitive swimmers. And talk about crazy passionate about water safety and swimming, master swimmers are it. They um, a lot of times have Money. They are working in very pr uh, productive and, and profitable positions in their lives, and they can be donors to your organization as well as water safety proponents. We did a water safety day in um, north of Denver a couple of years ago where the, the organization, it was um, just a local rec center that was going to run the water safety day, and we had the stations, dry stations, wet stations. We promoted it about a week in advance that we could accommodate up to 144 kids. So we were gonna have 12 stations of 12, but we were looking for volunteers to help with things and master swimmers. Saw it in the newspaper, came in day out and just said, I'm here, what do you want me to do? And they ended up running stations for us and they were, they, they worked all day long. It wasn't like they wanted breaks. They were so happy to be talking about water and working with kids. They had a great, great time with that. And so master swimmers, phenomenal resource for you. And most communities do have a master swimming group. And so if you, um, their website is USMS for United States Masters Swimming, USMS.org. And so you can look up and see what's in your community and who's doing what where. Others in the aquatic industry, it's been interesting also to see who's stepping up, like pool builders and people that work with, the make starting blocks or the people that do the chlorine and the chemicals that filter a pool and that kind of stuff. They're wanting to come in to get involved with Make a Splash now from different standpoints. And it's been kind of cool. We have a guy down in Dallas that, a pool builder that has purchased, I think he purchased initially like 400 of the Water Watcher cards. Again, if you've been by the table or if you haven't yet come by, they're the, the things with the whistle on them that we're handing out. That's a Water Watcher card. And that is something for the adults to wear on their wrist when they're around a pool as a reminder to keep their eye on the kids 
it's actually got a, a kind of a statement on the back. You know, I won't socialize, I won't drink, I won't be distracted while I'm, it's my job to watch the kids in the water. And then they should be very ceremonious as they take that off and hand it to another responsible adult when it's their turn is over to watch the kids. And this gentleman is a pool builder and he's purchased like 400 of those from us so that he can give them to every family where he builds a pool. Anytime he's put in a backyard pool, he's giving them water watcher cards to keep the kids safer around the water. So again, these are, these are folks that want to be of help, and so if you can match up with them in your communities, anything that you can do to, to make those connections, those are the ones that you want to, to partner up with. And we're, we're all about not having, to, not having to reinvent the wheel and not having to do it all yourself. So anything that you can do to get more people involved, the better. I want to tell you a few success stories that we've had over the course of the years. And these are always the fun ones to think about the things that they have done. Lenny Kraselberg was one of our 1996 and maybe 2000 Olympians. I've gotten too old, I know too many years worth of Olympians. Like I think those were the teams that Lenny was on. Um, he has a swim school in Los Angeles. And for the most part, he's running it up in Beverly Hills and he's making a very pretty penny with people that can afford to pay lots of money for swim lessons. But Lenny also has branches of his swim school that go down into LA Unified and teach swim lessons in the city. And one of the coolest things is to watch what they've done over the course of the years at a place called Bethune Middle School. It's, um, it's I, I don't know the percentages of African American kids and Hispanic kids, um, but it's like 98% population of, of those ethnicities. Um, kids that typically were never exposed to swim lessons, but there's a pool right at their school, and families, multiple generations of families that were not swimmers, and these kids are getting into swim lessons. These kids, over the course of the five years that we've been involved with them, have progressed from being afraid to get in the water, embarrassed body image, not wanting to get in the water, to blowing bubbles, to being able to swim the length of the pool, to now many of them are ready to join the middle school swim team, and they want to create one of those because they've grown from that to so much confidence in what they're doing and loving it so much that they're they're like chomping at the bit. They have um, a school cycle where they're they're on track and they're in classes for like six weeks, then they're off track for two weeks as others cycle through. And the swim lessons happen when they are in an off track cycle so that they have time to be in the water during the day, but they're not missing out from their classwork. And they're like, you know, when is it my turn? To, you know, I'm not off track yet. When is it my turn to get in the lessons? These kids are so excited about this stuff. So it's cool to see that much growth and enthusiasm to go from afraid to get in the water to ready to be competitive. YMCA of Treasure Valley in Caldwell, Idaho. This is a fun one because they took on a project last year where they got a grant, a $5,000 grant. They said, we're gonna put all of our second graders into swim lessons. Um, so it was a local elementary school, shuttled their kids over. They got funding from the school system to take their kids over to the pool. The YMCA stepped up and taught the lessons. And the, the what they sent us at the end of the season, and did, in addition to the report that they'd had X number of children enrolled in swim lessons and the, the stats that we wanted, they sent us a video. And the video was the superintendent presenting to the school system saying, the second graders that we put into lessons this year, suddenly absenteeism changed and they weren't missing school so much because they wanted to go to swim lessons. They had higher confidence factors where they were just so proud of themselves for having learned something that they never would have thought of learning before and they learned it. And this class of second graders has the best set of standardized test scores that we've ever had for second graders ever in our school. And we're gonna give all the credit to swim lessons. Of course, we're watching this video going, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that we wanna hear. It's one of those things, that it's kinda hard to document confidence factor in small children. Um, test scores are one thing, or we're only just beginning to get reports like this, so it's something we definitely wanna start tracking. Because if we can actually show this up, of course, what a better case for getting children into swim lessons is to, to do this. Swimming as a sport has always felt that we've had kids that have better time management skills and, and discipline and, and that kind of stuff. But it's one of those things that even to hear it credited off of one session of swim lessons with a group of second graders is very, very cool stuff. The Josh Project in Toledo, Ohio. Um, Wanda Butts, another mom who lost a kid to a drowning situation, Horrible tragedy. Wanda is one of our heroes of all times. Wanda, as she, in her own words, says she's turned a tragedy into a triumph. 
and she's actually, she's one of CNN's heroes. Um, she made it through the first round, or actually the first two rounds. I guess she's already won something like $50,000 off of it, but she's one of the top 10 finalists. So if you want to help make a splash, go to CNN Heroes, vote for Wanda Butts on the Josh Project, because if she wins that, she could get $250,000. I mean, that's pretty cool stuff. What Wanda did was she decided her son Josh was a teenager. He had gone out with friends. It wasn't a toddler that tripped into a pool or anything like that. Josh was a teenager, and he went out with a bunch of his friends, and they were rafting, and the raft tipped, and Josh didn't know how to swim. Wanda doesn't know how to swim. Wanda is taking lessons now. We've got Wanda in the water. She's trying to learn how to swim. But when Josh drowned, she decided that she didn't want another family to ever go through that. It's, it's the horrible phrase that you hear every parent say. I don't want another family to ever have to go through this, what we went through. It's, I, I, it, it wrenches my heart every time I hear it. But Wanda did something about it. She created this foundation, and what they do with the Josh Project is they most of her funding started initially from her church in Toledo, but it's grown into a much larger fundraising campaign. But they sponsor children from their church into swim lessons with the Greater Toledo Aquatic Club. And so every time the kid does a swim test, you know, Wanda's there, she takes she takes pictures, she watches them get their shirt when they pass their swim test and stuff like that. And we have a video of her where and she says, you know, she watches this little boy do his swim lessons or his swim test and he pass you know, he swims across the pool and he climbs out, they give him his shirt, and she says, That's one less life we'll have to worry about. That's one more life we've saved. And it's again it, it chokes me up to think about it, but it makes a difference. So Wanda's done that. Horizons National, that's why we're here today, because of this lady right over here. Um, we got contacted, I guess it was just about a year and a half ago, and Horizon, you guys, what all do you do besides just swimming? Is it math and science? What's, what's well, your I summer enrichment? Summer enrichment and field trips, and it's a, it's a broad scale program, but, but so not just for some reason, somebody in the very beginning, you know, I don't know if it was coincidence, we started swimming and we saw the same kind of confidence effects that you do, so we've, we've made it a requirement. And so swimming is one of the, the, they're one of the summer learning programs that, that y'all are here for, and Kim made this connection with us and said, you know, here's this summer learning conference that we may want to come to, so that's why we're here. Thank you very much for this opportunity. But yeah, they partner up and they do swim lessons. <coughs> swimming is one of the things that they do in their summer learning programs. And so that one of the partners that they hooked up with was one of our Make a Splash local partners in Savannah, Georgia. Well, we've also since met with the folks in Denver, Colorado, and we want and you have 26 locations across the country so far. So we want to get each one of those. We've talked on the phone with their executive directors. We want to line up all of those local affiliates to be our local affiliates as well and connect their kids to our local partners to get kids into swim lessons. So again, that's why we're here is making these connections. Um, I've kind of already told you stories about the Greater Houston Y, where they take the instructors out to the to the local apartment complexes, and it's just that's working fabulously. It's a partnership between the Y, Toyota, us, um, the the apartment association, that, which evidently runs through the whole city of Houston. So if you have something like that in your community, again, it's a connection that you can help make. Um, and then they also get with the Greater Houston Y the cable local cable channel. I guess they have I think it's Clear Channel is their their cable company. They give them like four free um, public service announcements a year to run water safety messaging. They also make billboards for them in English and in Spanish. So around the city of Houston, I think they get 10 billboards every summer to put up a water safety message. And then they also do a really cool thing, which it was, it was interesting. We took our Phillips 66 sponsors in one, the day they were doing um, a, a television um, segment on water safety. It's typically they air it like right before Memorial Day, good time right before all those summer pools open and that kind of stuff, depending depending on your community. If you're in a warmer climate, sometimes they open earlier, but for a lot of people, they view Memorial Day as like the opening of swim season. And they have they do simulated drownings. And they show it right from, they show the, the child going to the pool unattended, the child getting in the pool, the child in trouble. Um, the child that's doing the acting of all of this is a swimmer who happens to be the son of the aquatics director of the Y. And mom has coached him through this very carefully. Like what she says, you know, when, when Sally, the instructor that was coming in to save them, she's, she's, don't giggle when Sally wraps you up. You know, she's coached him through to this point. It's like, you're supposed to be unconscious, don't giggle. And, um, but it was interesting because the folks from Phillips 66 
were on the, we were, we're, the, the one they did the year we were there, they've done beaches, they've done public pools, they've done uh, apartment pools. The one we did was a, a backyard pool the, when we were there. And so we're all standing in this backyard and the Phillips 66 folks knew what to watch for. They knew it was all simulated. When they finished, the child got into trouble, the lady came out, she was pretending to be the mom rather than the head instructor. Sees him, panics, calls 911, jumps in, pulls him out, starts CPR, then they actually had the fire department there in the neighborhood to, to come in and pull the child, put him on the backboard, take him out. They, they, they filmed all of this. I turned and looked, the folks from Phillips 66 were crying. They're like, even though we know this is a fake act, what we just observed is that moving. They were crying. And so the, the Houston Y does phenomenal stuff in support of that kind of messaging and the importance of getting their kids in to learn to swim. The U.S. Swim Academy in Coral Springs, Florida is one of our local partners, private swim school. They've partnered with a, a group down in Florida called Swim Central, and that is all about getting kindergartners into swim lessons in the Broward County area. So Swim Central helps with that. So not only are they doing that kind of stuff, they've also gotten a Make a Splash grant from the USA Swimming Foundation to, they sponsor refugee children into their uh, lessons. A story that somebody told us on one of these, I mean, how am I doing on story time here? <laughs> like, I'll double check to make sure I'm not keeping you guys too long. Oh, we're good so far. I tend to tell stories and then we get in trouble. Um, this one instructor was telling me about a refugee family that had come in from Africa, that they put this little, um, little one in, in the area of, of where swim lessons were going to be, and the child was like backed up against the wall like would not come over to the edge of the pool back against the wall. As they started, language was a bit of a barrier, but as they started learning what was going on, the child had been always told to stay away from water because water has crocodiles. All water has crocodiles, so don't get near the water. And because that's where the child came from, that was a problem. And so no water could be trusted. And so it was very much a case of getting the child away from the wall just over to the edge of the pool to start with. And then again, confidence building, learning trust. You know, this is multiple days of learning trust with the instructor. That finally the child will put their toes in the water, see other kids in the water. Yeah, every day, look, other kids are fine. No crocodiles are getting them. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Once they finally got the child in the water, the lesson had to start with the child on the instructor's shoulders, doing a scout of the pool to make sure there were no crocodiles before the child could get in the water. The child now swims, but that took many, many, many days. Again, these are things average person here in the U.S., this is not an issue for us, but a child coming from another culture and another, another environment, this is very real to them. And these are the things that our swim instructors and our partners are growing through. So it's kind of one of those things where every time we hear a story like that, it's like, oh, I have to jot that one down because that's another story that I have to tell because it's, it's something that we're not accustomed to. It's something that most 